Welcome to the shack out back. And I'd like to say uh, happy birthday to my dad. Happy, happy birthday, dirt, birthday, Mike. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, he's what made me who I, I am today. Dad too. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, hey, he'd dad. probably accept it. <laughs> you wouldn't be the last one. <laughs> And then uh, he's taking care of your mom right now. Oh, yeah. And yep. so, man, Mike's, you know, keep Mike in your prayers, too, because he's really, um, he's stepping up, and she's lucky to have Mike in her life. And well, she's, she's pretty her. much on vacation right now because he's cooking dinner, <laughs> doing the laundry, <laughs> washing dishes. You know, he's doing it all right now. So Right on. Well, yeah, happy he's... birthday, man. You deserve it. Um, and so we wanted to start off with that obviously but then the next scripture that you guys if you wanted to turn your bibles to it's romans 8 and it's verses 12 through 17 and we wanted to read that to you and we wanted to discuss it a little bit and tell you about our day <laughs> a little bit <laughs> and how that that scripture kind of means something to us oh sorry um so romans 8 verse 12 through 17 says so then brothers we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the flesh, and you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. And so, I don't know, I'll start, I guess I'll start my day. <laughs> I was telling these guys, so today I'm really working hard on, like, I don't, I was off for a month, I kind of got, depressed and I don't know if like chemically my brain just not working and sitting around all day because I wasn't allowed to lift nothing and so I've been dealing with a little bit of spouts of anger and like not really like my my head is not right for for the last week or two you know I've been really struggling with it but anyway I'm working on it and I'm trying to use God to help me with it so um, I was trying to pray without ceasing today uh, it was like a practice that I was really trying so I woke up, I went to Cleveland to get glass, I had a glass day today, and so I prayed the whole way there, you know, and just trying my best. And so I get there, and uh, <laughs> took real long, because I had a lot of glass today, and then, you know, I was getting behind, I was a little irritated about that, but then I'd pray again, anytime I got irritated, I'd try to pray and thank God for something, just to distract myself from what I was being irritated about. And so I leave the glass place about 10, 15 miles down the road. I'm on a highway now, and it all hits me. I left my notebook with all the addresses, with all the part numbers, with all the names, with all, you know what I'm saying, everything on their desk. And I just called a customer to tell them I was coming, you know, to do their glass. And so right then and there, dude, it was like the straw that broke the camel's back. I just lost it. Thank goodness no one else was around, but I was just so mad. And... Part of it was I was I was just irritated because it was like Lord I've, I was I was trying my hardest today to be like a good Christian to keep my mind where it was supposed to be. Why didn't you remind me of that? You know why didn't you throw me a bone before I got 15 miles down the highway and had to do the illegal U-turn? You know what I'm saying at that point. And so I had a moment, and then after that moment, went back and got it and. I, you know, I called my wife and I was telling her I was like struggling, pray for me. I was, and we, we talked a little bit. But anyway, after that, I felt guilty about it. And then part of me didn't even want to pray anymore because it was like, you know, this, that obviously didn't help me at all. <laughs> but, you know, and so I, I kind of was wrestling with all this. And finally, the Lord just kind of helped me understand. It's like, you know what? While I was praying all morning, God knew I was going to probably get angry at 11 o'clock. He knew I was going to lose it. 
You see what I'm saying? He knew, he knew my thoughts in my heart before I knew my thoughts in my heart. He was already on top of what my subconscious was fixing to do before I knew what my subconscious was going to make me do or lead me to do. And so when we read this scripture today, it just kind of like it hit me a little bit to think, you know, we are debtors. God already knows that you owe something that you can't repay. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to live up to Christ, but you can't. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like what Paul says, like, I want to do good, but I, you know, I don't do it sometimes and vice versa. And so instead of getting all down and depressed and then blaming God, you know, I was able to kind of have a little bit of peace and knowing that, Lord, you know, I know what I did was wrong and want to work on it, but instead of just like focusing on that and then not being able to pray on my way back and not being able to live for God today because I feel like I blew it and I felt like, you know, it was like, what's the point now? It was kind of like, I just felt good knowing that, you know, he already took care of that little bit of a blowout on the cross. And it's not like, now I, I'm not forgiven because I've sinned again. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a it's like windshield wipers. It continually keeps me clean. You know that's the power of Jesus's blood. It continually. It's right there, it tells you. What one is that? Uh, it's uh, eight verse three. Romans eight verse yeah. three. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemned sin and the flesh in order that the righteous requipment of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirits yep and there it is yeah it's right before that <laughs> yeah and so you come to a point i think where you're just like I think you have to, as your walk with Christ, so like, I think you, you should be sorry. What does the scripture say? Like godly sorrow versus worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow, you just stay there. And that's where I, there was a danger that Seth was going to stay there today. Uh -huh. Because I was just irritated. And it was just like, you know what? I can't do this. Every time I try, 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 I fail, fail, fail. You know what I'm saying? And it just gets to that point where you get, you kind of get so down on yourself. And then you think God doesn't, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you think, but you just don't feel like you're as close to him. And I, the scripture here, he's saying, we're all debtors. He already knows that. But he, he's adopted you, and Jesus took on all those debts on the cross so that when stuff like that happens, and Seth kind of gets out of control a little bit sometimes, he can come back to God and, and know that God hasn't changed his opinion of who he's called. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't changed his mind about you just because you're an idiot. Like, he knew you were an idiot from the get-go. You know what I'm saying? That's why Jesus came. And so that helped me today just kind of get back up on the horse and to try to be like Jesus again, even though Satan really tried to, like, knock me out today. And I think that happens to everybody. Oh, I think yeah. that's super important for us to remember, you know? It's just like... You you've been adopted, so you're not gonna you're not gonna be exactly like your father. You're adopted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're you're different. Doesn't matter. He still he accepted that, and he's he doesn't want you to stay there forever. He wants you to move forward, but he knows that process of you trying to get a little bit more like him is gonna be bumpy. And that's why we have Jesus. It's already taken care of. So stop letting it destroy you. Stop letting it like make you feel like you can't have that relationship with God. You can't keep talking to him and that he doesn't forgive you. And then you, because what happens is you, you stop, you let that get in the way, and then you're, you miss out on the thing that he actually had waiting for you that day. You know, that's what Satan's trying to do. Satan knows how much God loves you. And we've got enough evil in ourselves. So sometimes Satan doesn't even do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And, but I don't know. That's the scripture that we read today. I don't know. I, it really hit me today because it was it was just something. 
was simple and it was like it helped me remember kind of what I dealt with today it's like I'm an adopted so I'm not gonna be perfect but I'm, I'm as long as you get up and keep trying that forgiveness is always gonna be there he don't feel differently from you I mean he came and died for us when we actually hated him yeah he died for the people that were spitting on him and so I didn't actually spit on him you know what I'm saying? And if I did, he would have still died for me, and he still would have felt the same way about me. He would have done it again. Because that's who God is. And it's just, it's hard to, like, imagine there's a being out there like that, because I'm not like that. Because I'm adopted. You know? I'm just not like that. And so it's important that we focus, let, get rid of yourself, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, you got to get out of the flesh. Yeah. And that's fleshly thinking. Mm. Oh, I messed up. I can't have a relationship with them anymore. Well, that's because that's what happens in your relationship. It hurts your relationship with human beings when you do something stupid and it affects it. Well, with God, as long as you're willing to not give up, it doesn't affect the way he feels about you. He already knows, you're, you know, that was coming. Yeah. I don't know. That was just kind of insightful to me today. I knew that, but I didn't know know that until today you know I was just like yeah I need to kind of stop being fleshly minded and think about how the Bible tells me God really thinks about me I don't know it's interesting you were talking about a, a couple of things yeah about being in the flesh <laughs> right <laughs> which I don't know it just seems like I'm never happy there's people there's, that yeah, we there, know yeah there's yeah. people that I know you can walk up to him first thing in the morning and say good morning and he was like you think that's a good morning and just be all angry all the time and then like he thinks highly of himself but yet he don't really do much and always angry everybody and it affects everybody around him because they're always like man did you talk to what's his name the day he was just bad right <laughs> you know it's like so it affects everybody around you too so yeah, and that's that's kind of where Satan wants to leave you. And God, that's it's interesting how like psychological the scriptures really all are. Like there's a there's a being that's constantly pulling you out of the depths of your own psyche, because that's what really stops us from doing anything ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's you know anytime anybody is mean or does something, psychology really says it. There's a couple of things that produce that. Most of it's guilt. They're not super happy about who they are in life, you know what I'm saying? So then, therefore, they project that onto other people, and they come across certain ways. But with Christ, what he did, he removed that guilt from us, that we don't have to stay there. Obviously, we feel bad about certain things, but he gives us that that lifting of our our mind to, like, beyond that to get beyond that jesus already took care of that he went to the depths i think it's to always think spiritually first yeah before flesh because i think once you you think spiritually then then it kind of calms you slows you down to where you can think about the situation before getting like heated back and saying something that you might regret later right. or or cause even more conflict if you if you think spiritually first, then usually that might 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 you know and then having that like smooth things over yeah. and having that foundation of belief, knowing that listen, if you were called, you know he's already a, he's already atoned for you. There's a scripture that says if you were called, you were redeemed, meaning it's already happened. So like get beyond that way of thinking, like so like the lower levels of thinking. That's guilt and um, depression and not feeling worthy enough, low self-esteem. And Jesus is constantly trying to get you above that, like, that barrier of thought process, up to a higher thought process, saying, don't worry about that. We already know that. Don't dwell on that because that's going to drive you down into the depths of hell. What I'm trying to do is lift your thinking. And the way I've helped you with that is I've come and taken care of your guilt. I've come and taken care of this feeling bad about yourself. And I put it all on myself. So just have faith that I've done that for you. And when you mess up trying to be like my son, don't worry about it. 
I mean, try not to let it happen again. I'm not just saying, like, it's okay to just say, that's what Corinthians said. So should we sin that grace may abound? Heaven forbid. You know what I'm saying? But, like, at a certain point, you got to do, you have to come to that realization that, like, listen, dude, you're going to mess up. You're, you're, you're fleshly. You're a wretch. Like Paul says about himself, I'm a wretch. God still loved you. And if you're listening to this, that's because God led you to listen to his word. There's a reason you're listening to this. If you go to church, there's a reason why he led you to church. Just because you don't feel worthy enough or you don't feel like you're good enough, don't quit. Don't let that discourage you and get you in a rut like the world gets in a rut and that lower level of thinking. Always allow him to lift your thinking to today is a new slate. Everything behind me, even if it's five minutes behind me, it's behind me. What can I do at this second? for Jesus. And that's the craziest thing because it's a beautiful, beautiful philosophy that Jesus came and brought us because he says, I remember the good always. I'll never forget the righteous, that things that you do in my name and all the bad that you've done. I will not remember it when I see you. You know, I just won't remember it. It actually says it will be thrown into the sea of forgetfulness, whatever that means, you know. <laughs> I think I'm stuck in the sea of forgetfulness. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you are too. <laughs> uh, I have been, you know. It, we all, you know, we all struggle with that. I think. Yeah. I mean, that's just the human condition. That's what's so amazing about Jesus and how he kind of dominates this this human condition. He, he gives you a way out. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's not proof of that it's real and their salvation is real, you know what I'm saying? If that's not proof, just your psych psychological way of thinking, of man's way of thinking. He pulled you out from the lower level of the thinking and put you at a higher level of thinking. That's, you know, that's everything Buddha tries to get you to do. That's everything, to find, you know, everything. Jesus just actually did it. He just, he wasn't, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a false religion. He actually did it for you. It's just interesting. I just had, we just had that thought today and we wanted to talk about it. And... Yeah. Do you have anything? No. Pretty good. Yeah. Thanks for DJ today. He helped me set a hundred pound windshield. Would not be able to do it without you. <laughs> you did the Lord's work today. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's what it's all about, man. I mean, nobody's perfect, but does it, should that stop us from doing what God's called us to do right this second? You know what I'm saying? I mean, everything behind us is behind us. Do you feel guilty about it? Well, it's okay to feel guilty, but don't stay there. Get out of it right away. Just know that God has already wiped it. As long as you don't quit, as long as you're willing to try to get back up. Um, I just think that was a, a good reminder for us all today, um, especially me today. I needed that reminder, and I thank God for giving it to me. Um, so... I hope this lesson, this little quick verse, read that verse when you get home and think about it, but I hope it's helped you. I hope it's going to help you this week because it's helped us. And then from there, I just, I think we're going to probably end it out. Well, I think another thing it talks about is admitting. First thing you got to do is admit that you're wrong. Right. So maybe that's how you bring it up and then you just, well, like, I'll give yeah. you an example today. When I when I finally w went about it, I was like, I finally got so frustrated because it's like, dude, I'm not going to lie to you. I get sick and tired praying and constantly asking forgiveness. That's annoying. Like, I can't ever move forward because I feel like I'm always asking God to help me and forgive me. You know what I'm saying? And so today I came to that point and I literally just, while I was talking to God, I said, God, you know my heart. You know I didn't want to be an idiot. So I'm not even going to, I just have faith that you forgave me. And I'm going to try to do better from here on out. You see what I'm saying? So like I, I, I took my thinking and, and stopped dwelling on, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, which that should be there. But at some point, it's exhausting. You keep, that's what that scripture says, the worldly sorrow, it keeps you there and keeps you in that lower level of thinking godly sorrow you recognize it but he lifts you up out of it 
when you finally come to that realization of like, listen, God, you know my heart. You know I don't want to be that way. I'm going to just start over right this second. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. not going to think about it anymore because it's literally driving me down, making me more angry. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. or, or you can look at it this way. You know, Lord, I'm sorry. Once he's, he hears that, now he's looking forward to seeing you get up and go forward. Right. You know? Yeah, move on. Yeah. If you're if you're dwelling right there saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you can look at you and say, well, yeah, you're sorry, but what are you doing about it? Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's all, it's a game, man. It's, 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 you have to live it to understand it. And God is really calling everybody to start living it so that they can start this process of truly understanding who he is. And I think once you actually start doing it, you start falling more in love with who God really is and who he, who he's trying to get you to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, but you have to do it. And then you realize just how awesome this being is. He's not like any other being. Um, he's not like me. He's not like any person that I know. He's so far above them. He has more love and mercy than anybody I've ever met. You know what I'm saying? And, and just have faith in that and know that what's in the past is in the past. Stop dwelling on it. Pick up your cross today. Pick up your cross a second. Be thankful right this second. Be joyful right this second because of what he's done. And let's not stay in the lower levels of thinking. Let's let's lift our perspective. Um, and so read Romans 8. That would probably be a good idea this week. Yeah. And be thinking about that when you're walking it. Um, just know you're going to mess up along the way and it's going to be frustrating. But God hasn't changed his thoughts about you. I mean, he could... You can't get any worse, you know, technically. His son already suffered and died on a cross. I don't know how you can make anything worse than that. I mean, he's already paid that debt, so it's not like you can match that somehow. And so stop. Just know that you did something wrong and get back up. Stop dwelling on it. Stop letting it, like, just discourage you and stop you from being what you're supposed to be in this life. And I guess that's what we wanted to bring to you guys tonight. Because that's important. That's that's the battle that Satan is constantly waging on me, and constantly waging on everybody. It stops you from being what you can be and what he wants you to be. And so, so we hope that you guys enjoyed it. We hope that it helps you this week and hopefully throughout your lives. And is that did you guys have anything else to add? No, I'm good. All right. Well, Lord willing, we will see you guys next week. Um, let's make sure we remember to pray for our country, uh, pray for Evan's mom, uh, pray for his dad too, and because that's, you know, he's taking care, he's picking up a lot of slack, and so just definitely keep his family in your prayers right now, and um, if you guys want to bring him dinner or anything, please get a hold of one of us, we would love to set you up on trying to hook them up and helping them out in the evenings, so don't be afraid to get a hold of us if you guys wanted to get something ready for him. And anybody else? I mean, everybody. Uh, Pap Schaefer, he still needs some prayers. Mm -hmm. Our country, I said that already, but I'll say it again. <laughs> Please be with our country, God. Please be with, be with us. You know, be with the citizens of this country and what's going on right now. It's getting, it's getting weird. Um, but if there's nothing else. DJ, yeah, I'll do it. You got us. Yeah, I got you. I was wondering if you knew I was going to call on you. <laughs> we made eye contact a couple of times. Dear Lord, uh, our gracious heavenly Father, uh, we come to you in prayer and ask you to just to lift us up and uh, show us the way. Uh, Lord, just uh, make us better children. Uh, we know we're going to stumble and fall, but we know that you're going to be right there to catch us. Lord, we ask you to, to look after our friends and family. Uh, look after <laughs> Evan's mom and dad. Uh, just keep them tightly in your hands. Lord, we just ask you to, to bless the world, heal it, make it better. And uh, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. You guys have a good night.